I just want to I just want to say this before we get started. This is a special day for me because both of you, you and Doug, uh, were amazingly beautiful people during the show prep. I always enjoy my show preps. I have not had one bad show prep, uh, but I enjoyed both of you. You are truly a beautiful person Aww. with a with a earth shattering smile. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, you have uh, very very much so eyes of understanding. Uh, you were very kind during the show prep, and Doug is funny. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm just going to put that. Doug is funny. He's very and I, I can tell he just wants you to be happy and smile uh, and is doing the best that he can to be the type of man that he is. Um, but I enjoy I just want you to know that. I want everybody on social media to know this. That I enjoyed my show prep with you. I enjoy all my show prep, but you as a couple are just too cute. Yeah. <laughs> These are just cute. And I'm happy that, that he's around there somewhere and at least is, is, is here. Uh, I truly appreciate it. I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Tell everybody who you are, which I don't normally do this, but I want people, who you are, your page, and what you, what you have going on that is, uh, that is very special and that can help other people. Thank you. So, well, I'm Cami. I'm 54. And Doug and I have been married for over 30 years. Um, I started my page, it was originally called Caregiver Cami, and this was back in September of 2020. And I started that page because Doug and I made a decision during the pandemic to put all of our belongings in storage. Our children are adults, so they were on their own. And we decided to move to Florida to take care of my parents being the pandemic, their health is not the best. And so we just thought it was like, it was an opportunity for us, right? To go down and take care of my parents who prior to me learning that my mother was a narcissist, right? Um, we just, we, it was a gift for us to be able to do that for them. So that's why I started this page and originally called it Caregiver Cami because I really wanted to tap into the to the community, the caregiver community within Instagram. Like Instagram is phenomenal for communities for support. And so that's the intent. And so, you know, I, I we got down there, had about six weeks, so things were going okay. Things were just they I started thinking something is just not right here. And it was probably three months after we got there, probably January, where I ended up switching gears with caregiver cami and turning it into narc abuse survivor cami because clearly my mm. posts had gone from caring for my elderly parents to talking about narcissistic abuse so that's the gist of it that's how narc abuse cami got started it was just when i started having awareness and realizing you know i mean it was mind-blowing yeah. Just realizing all this stuff. So so that's the short story about <laughs> Narc Abuse Survivor Cami. So Yeah, the, the uh short story in itself is is uh is still a very long story yeah. in itself. It, it it is it may seem light, but it is a heavy um uh, heavy thing. When someone goes to your page, by the way, uh your page is narc correct me if I'm wrong, what I have here on my copy is narc dot abuse dot Survivor Cami, correct? Did I say that wrong? I said it wrong. Let me see. Narc.abuse.survivor.cami. Ah. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so everyone, please do us a huge favor. If you're watching this right now, as I, as I encourage on all of my shows, but I'm saying it specifically right now, go to her page, please, and follow along with some of the things that I will be pulling off of the page uh, to highlight and that uh, Cami will be discussing um, and, and, and I'm hoping that, uh, we all will be in the trenches together today because that, uh, in the show prep, that was one of the things we talked about, Being uh, and I told you, you should hashtag it and I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> hashtag in the trenches. I told you I was going to do it. Uh, here it is. I'm just throwing it out there. Hashtag awesome. in the trenches. There it is. Look at me. I'm just, I had a long weekend and I don't know. My tongue hasn't come back. So, uh, <laughs> hashtag in the trenches. Literally. I, right. What did I just? This is turning into the show prep again. Look at this. Just turning, <laughs> hashtag in the trenches yes. is what I was attempting to say. Um, uh, anyhow, so 
um, in the show prep, we were really focusing on what we were going to highlight in the show, as, as is the norm when I do a show prep. But uh, what I wanted to do with you today was, well, the narc parental situation was not something you expected. Right. But you sold and moved and you are now in this situation as a couple who's been together for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And again, first time ever having a couple on Narc Abuse TV Network, <laughs> let alone Open Session Podcast, my other page, uh, all public service pages. But I do want to say this. You, you started to make some moves and started to get some information mm -hmm. because you recognized that you and your husband had sacrificed a great deal, of course, out of love. Right. But now you needed to make some adjustments to preserve not just your marriage, mm -hmm. but your own emotional stability. Yeah. What were some of the adjustments you needed to make? Oh, well, you know, the interesting thing is, so we moved down there in, down there in September of 2020. December 20th okay. of 2020 okay. is when, actually, ironically, a stranger on Instagram reached out to me. She had seen my post and she said, Cammie, I think your mom might be a narcissist. And so- well, that, I just want to ask, this was while you were still under the caregiver page? Yes. Okay, got yes, it. Yes, yes. Right. I had started to make posts about the abuse I was seeing. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the abuse by my mother wasn't just aimed at me. It was aimed at my terminally, terminally ill father. So right. things were just, you know, were just, um, it was really hard to make adjustments because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what narcissism was. I didn't know my mother was a narcissist, right? Um, and now technically I do have to tell you, she's never been diagnosed, but if you know anything about narcissism, it's really hard to get those people um, well, and I should probably only speak about my mother per in particular, but it's really hard to get them into a doctor to, to get a diagnosis. But according to everything I read, she fit all the parameters. And so, um, you know, it really, we, I was not in the mental space to be able to, you know, in December or two, even two or three weeks after I realized she was a narcissist, I wasn't in that mm -hmm. mental space to be able to make a pivot or to be able to like, you know, look at Doug and say, um, I mean, we, Doug and I did have conversations. We, you know, I mean, of course I had to talk to him. He's my husband, right? Yeah. He's your <laughs> and husband. We this, was, and we were in this he, together and he was witnessing yeah. it every single day. Right. And yeah. so, um, and, Doug, and Doug doesn't look like a guy that plays around. So, <laughs> no, no. Well, no, his number yeah. one goal is, is, of course, to protect his family. Yes, that's what I'm saying. He looked like, I, I know what I'm looking at. It's like, yeah. when I saw him, I was like, okay, that man don't play around. He's going to protect his wife. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Right. yeah. So really, we, we the only, I, 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 I honestly, when I started to understand narcissism and started to make connections to things that happened to me in the past, to even the things that were happening to me while I was living there, um, I actually reverted back to how I would behave when I lived under their roof as a teenager, as okay, a young adult. Just for a moment, that's exactly where I was going with this, and I'm glad you brought that out. There's this aspect of what was taking place, just looking at some of the postings that you did. And again, in the show prep, I never want to know everything because yeah. everything is live and unscripted. We touched on a few things. But that's what intrigued me about you and Doug because there are a lot of moving pieces here that stepped into all of a sudden this other person's home biologically connected you mm -hmm. Doug's there too. And now all of a sudden he was having maybe a different wife who was reverting back to, yeah, yeah you know what I'm, you know where I'm going. Go ahead. I you, know exactly go where you're going Speak to it. because yes. he literally saw me as, you know, um, I'm 54. Like, I'm comfortable in my shoes, right? I, yeah, I right, know, right, right, right. Like that, you get that confidence and that wisdom with age. But then he, I, I'm getting chills as I'm telling you this, which tells me I'm probably right. I, I know. <laughs> By the way, for everybody, for everybody, th this is challenging for us. So don't, don't, please don't think anything different. And if you do, I understand <laughs> that you may. But I'm just saying, this is not easy for her to talk about this. She is, I again say, that's why this sign is behind me. It says <laughs> shout out. Everybody, go to her page, click follow. Like, comment, share, follow, because your support is immensely appreciated by her and Doug. But I'm telling you, I have tr truly appreciate it, too. Please go ahead. And you were describing this as best you can. Yeah. So, you know, he, he 
went from seeing his confident, the, his confident right. mind, who he's always <laughs> yeah. known and loved, right? Little yeah. plug there. Right. To right, watching, right. Little plug. <laughs> to watching right, right. me revert back to walking on eggshells. There you go. Trying right. to stay underneath the radar, right? right. Trying, I mean, right. just, just, just reverting to the to fear and yeah. all the emotions that I felt when I was a ten-year-old, eight-year-old, sixteen-year-old yeah. came right. flooding back to me, and I yeah. never—it's not something I expected, but it's like riding a bike, I guess you could say. Right, real good analogy. Mm -hmm. Where you know your your brain is wired for survival, and that's exactly where I went. And I was fight oh. fight or flight. I was survival mode. And you know, after about six weeks of this, you know, I, I, Doug and I just sat down. We were outside of the house at this time, probably at a happy hour somewhere. <laughs> but um, and I just looked at him and said, "Something's got to give. We have to. I have yeah. to get out of here. I have got to get out of here." So we pulled up our calendars on our phones, circled a date and did everything in our power to get out of there by that certain date. And we did, but right. you know, leading up to that, they're still my parents. And yes, I did get them set up with an in-home nurse who would come and make visits, you know, mm -hmm. everything taken care of that I did for them while I was there. And, mm -hmm. and then we left, we left central Florida and drove a thousand miles north to Ohio. We didn't have a place to live lined up. Wow. And, Right. There was uh, there was a snowstorm in the Midwest, so that delayed us by a few days in North Carolina. But wow. um, yeah, you you found yourself as a couple making adjustments to be with your family. Yeah. Himself sacrificing the strength of your relationship uh, to make sure that you were able to take care of your obligation and taking care of your mom and your dad. How did it make you feel out of a number of emotions that you could have had? How did it make you feel to know that you were stepping out of this situation? Was there a lingering thoughts in your mind as to the well-being, emotional well-being of your dad? Oh, yeah. And, and that's just, we could talk, that's, that's another show. I know. <laughs> I, I know. You know, if I can be I, honest <laughs> with you. Um, yeah. But so yeah it was very difficult leaving the act of just leaving and saying goodbye to them it was one of the most bizarre surreal experiences of my life um mm -hmm. the emotional well-being of my dad um they've been married for 59 years my parents and my dad revealed a lot to me about their relationship when it was just him and i in the room um mm -hmm. his emotional well-being he's his trauma bond with her supersedes everything wow his trauma wow. he's very enmeshed with her um you know he told me at one point that his instinct is to still defend her and part of him still loves her but yet oh, he recognizes right. the abuse we went through so it's just like this real complicated web of just I, like i can't even describe it there's just a million and one emotions and they all tug on my heartstrings, right? I mean, that part's really hard. I've had to, you know, my dad was always my, what I thought was my protector, mm -hmm. up until mm -hmm. I realized he was her enabler. So, um, so su super quick. Okay, no, I'm sorry. You gotta, no, hold on a second. That's pretty deep. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> that, we didn't touch on that in the, in the show prep. When did that, when did that pendulum swing that you started to recognize that? That it wasn't, yes, the enabler label that he took on. When I learned about an enabler. So on December 20th of 2020, when I learned about narcissism, I, yes. I dove in and I started learning from different websites, learning it from different Instagram accounts, just learning. And so okay. most of my focus was on my narcissistic mother, my covert, by the way, narcissistic mother. But the okay. other half of it started to look at my dad and his responsibility. Or, you know, his, his um, what's the word I'm looking for? His, uh, his role. Okay, all right. Right, mm -hmm. so um, my husband actually dug quite a major role in this discovery because he um, had walked into, walked past a room where both my parents were and he heard my dad, overheard my dad telling my mom everything that 
I was doing that day or I had done the day before. So Doug's like, I think your dad might be spying on us or spying on you. And he's done that for his whole life. I know he has because I remember my mother when I was young used to look at me and say, Cammie, I've got eyes in the back of my head. Oh my God. And wow. I know everything you're doing, which would freak me out at 10 years old. But I came well, to realize yeah. it was with my dad. My dad was the, my mother's eyes on the back of her head. He was enabling her behavior. So he, was, he, was, he was doing it even when you were young. Mm -hmm. So he could survive. That was his survival. What? What made you recognize that this was not going to work? Was there a day? Was there a moment? When did it become clear to you that your emotional safety and stability and your marriage mm. was not going to be able to keep down this road? It's one thing, yes, you guys circled it on, 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 on your calendars and so forth. But realistically, realistically, when did it like click to you and then you went to your husband what was it that took place? It was about five or six weeks after I learned. So that would have put us in January. And, okay. Um, uh, I, January 20, 2021. Yeah, right. Yes, right. yes. January 2021. Okay, go ahead. And okay. I, had, I had just been um, walking on eggshells. Um, I wasn't, mm -hmm. I stopped eating. You know, when you go into survival mode, you know, so not oh, yeah. only was <laughs> I operating as a 54-year-old woman, I was operating as a 10-year-old child. You yeah. know, does that make sense? Wow. Like no, I, I'm with you. If nobody <laughs> else is, uh, Amy's here. Uh, um, uh, Jay Victor's here. Shush no more. And I see you, my lovely Ann. Uh, um, Abe is here. Uh, of course, your husband, Doug, is here. Uh, Siren. Uh, everybody, please, if you're not familiar, uh, I, I butcher these Instagram names. <laughs> uh, so feel free to type a, a fake name or whatever you want to put in there if you feel emotionally safe. So I can call you by your by a first name. But thank you, everyone, for watching and joining us today. Today is a day we're giving a shout out right behind me over here. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Uh, shout out to Cammy. This is shout out Monday uh, for those who have endured narcissism and narcissistic abuse. That's what this day is for. Uh, today, it's uh, Cammy's uh, turn to be the diva and tell us her story. Uh, again, touch on what you were saying, please. Sure. So it had been five to six weeks after finding out that my mother's a narcissist. And I just had been every single day, 24 seven walking on eggshells again. The fear and the survival were so strong in me that I had knots in my throat, knots in my stomach, I was having a hard time eating. Um, I would go to bed crying, I would wake up crying. My and goodness. right, and it's just, just, it's your mother, like the person who's supposed to love you unconditionally your entire life lift you up, gear you for success. And so, I mean, I had decades of, you know, my gosh, you know, how in the world can you abuse someone you love, right? So um, about five or six weeks later, I had just gotten to the point where I physically couldn't function. And so, you know, Doug and I had gone, we were out of the house and I just mm -hmm. looked at him and I probably started crying. And I yeah. told him, I yep. said, we have, I have to, I need help. We have yep. to do something. We have to get out of here. We purposefully gave ourselves about four weeks to get everything, everything lined up for them that we needed to. Like I okay. couldn't just leave them. No, no, no. By all means. Right. But I couldn't stay there because like you said, the mental, my mental wellness, it mm -hmm. was starting to strain our marriage. So, you know, Doug was yeah. wanting to yep. watch me walk this path. Yep. And, yeah. Um, you know, I can only imagine. I but, can only imagine as a, yeah. as a man. I can only, yeah. Yeah. So, because he's probably sitting there going like, "Look, I'm gonna tell you something. We packing this stuff. We out of here now." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like you know what? Call a nurse. Get somebody over here because we're gonna go stay at a hotel. We're we're we're, we're out of here. Right. Yeah. Like we literally sat with a piece of paper and wrote down every single possible thing we had to do, and the most important thing, ironically, was making sure my parents were taken care of. At the bottom of the list was having a place to live in Ohio. Because we knew wow. once we got up here, we could just live in a hotel until oh, yeah. we found a place to live. Right? Until you found a place, right. Yeah, but man, I, thought, I felt like I was, like we fled their house. I, like I felt like I was fleeing. So it was wow. just. Well, okay, so now I, now I have to ask, ask this question. Uh, and everybody is saying thank you to you for, for doing this. Oh, Anne and others, uh, Siren and other, Astaire, I believe that's it. 
Um, uh, matter of fact, Amy highlights, she says, uh, wow, this is amazing. But she also says the insidious thing, which is I'm going to get into more of that. Thank you, Amy, for highlighting that, that this is crazy. Uh, the the things that you have to go through, she's highlighting. But we're going to talk more about some other things. You're getting tons of hearts for quite a while across the screen because everyone is showing you love. I appreciate that from everybody that's here. By the way, if you're watching this, not that you have to, but please, you have to. Tell a friend uh, to join and jump on to show their love for Cami. Um, like, comment, share. Uh, follow her page. Uh, please do that. Um, anyhow, what I wanted to, to touch on is this. When you were living there, when you were living with them, before you ever met Doug, mm. was there any inkling, any idea that something was off or was it just given to that, you know, my parents are just parents and they're just old and cranky and I'm just a young teenager and I don't, I'm just curious. What yep. was it like living so, in their home before you ever met Doug? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I remember growing up being scared to death of my mother. My earliest wow. memories are being fearful of her. And, but I, that was my norm. Like I thought all moms were like this. I didn't have right. a barometer, right, to, to compare my mother to anybody else's. Now, as I got older and would go to friend's house, I remember I would not want to go home because I didn't know what I would face at home right so um but it you thought was, that was um, you thought that was normal huh yeah i thought it was normal and then you know you fast forward to us living in florida um for that six month time frame recently and it was just normal but then when i saw her starting to abuse my dad that's when i started thinking like wait a second the this 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 is wrong like you're this is, wrong. Th this is wow. all shades of wrong so yeah. um but what was it, the, you know, what Oh, I'm way, sorry, please. No, please go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. In a way, it was a blessing to be down there because if I hadn't have been down there, I would not have discovered narcissism. I would not have discovered. Wouldn't have crossed your mind. It wouldn't have Never even crossed your mind. mind. No. And that so, is amazing. That's fascinating to me. Yeah. So it was definitely a God thing that put us down there. And, um, but, you know, as a child, there was always screaming and yelling and everything was my fault. And if you're a victim of parental narcissistic abuse, you probably know what I'm getting ready to say without me even saying it because you experienced it too, right? Yeah. It's the constant walking on eggshells. It's the projection of every negative thing that my mother felt she was, she projected that onto me. I'm an Aries, I'm a leader. And so she would shoot me down all the time. So it, it was just constant punishment, constant screaming and yelling and, um, you know, there I do have some posts on my Instagram page, especially I would say from December through March of 2021. Um, uh, okay, you, no, go ahead. You'll see a I, lot I think, of detailed yeah. stuff. There. Yeah, I, it, it caught my eye. No, I'm just saying that's what that's what that period of time caught yeah. my eye, and I was like, and that was brutal. wow. Yeah, you everybody, you'd have to go take a look at it on your own. I, I actually thought about touching on it. But no, yeah. somebody has to actually see it. And you have to read it yourself if you're in the audience. Um, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. I have to read this. I'm going to read one. Okay. I'll, I'll read this part that you okay, have. I'll read one of these. I'm going to read this. Uh, uh, I'll pull this out right here. Everybody just bear with me. Here we go. Uh, there's quite a, quite a bit there. But uh, even if you didn't grow up in a home full of love and creativity, you are capable of choosing love and finding your own creativity. And um, you have an extensive uh, set of comments after that, but I'm going to touch on this. The realization is about my childhood home where there was zero love, mm. zero creativity, zero happiness, zero empathy, yeah. zero grace. Yeah. Everyone, please grab a hold of that. If you've got a friend that's been through it, <laughs> share this page with them. Tell a friend, as I often say. You're talking about zero love, zero creativity, zero happiness, zero empathy, zero grace. Yeah. That was no, love, creativity, happiness, empathy, grace. I'm just saying, I've only been doing this a year uh, coming up uh, August 1st. I have found all of this fascinating, but each one of the five things you just highlighted in that post that you made there, 
those are the things that people who have had parental uh, narcissistic parents or parental abuse, those are some of the things they touch on. No creativity in the home. It's not even, it's not even really appreciated. I was punished for my creativity. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, that's the best way to say it. Yeah. What was that like for you? Um, Being punished that way. Like stifling. You know, it's, it's like, um, like our, our, let's see. See, now I'm at a loss for words. Um, and I'm never at a loss for words, trust me. No, you, no hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I know. I um, got a touch of that. I saw that in the show prep. That's why I said, oh, she could be a great guest. You'll keep talking. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I do want motivational speaking. So let me. Yeah, yeah. Words, well, so. you've talked. You've talked in front of thousands, and all yeah, things, but I, right. I understand. Yeah. This is a challenging, a challenging subject. Yeah. But let me let me put it to you like this. Let me say this. Let me rephrase that. When you were at home, you had one experience. When you were able to be out of the home, mm. you felt free. No. Got it. That's okay. No. Go ahead. Why? I, I Why have. weren't you free? Yes. Yeah. Why right. weren't you free even though you weren't there? Right. And so what it was is it's a lifetime of condition responses, right? So when I lived at home as a child, teenager, I was in survival mode all the time. That survival mode has followed me into adulthood. And every single person who's been affected by narcissistic abuse, they have the same problem. These condition responses follow us into adulthood. So, wow. I, right? Like I've, and I discovered the month I found out that my mother is a narcissist that I can paint with watercolors. <sighs> it's the biggest mind blowing thing to me, you know? And so yeah. that creativity was always there. I bring that up because it shows that the talent and the creativity was always there, but mm -hmm. it was always yeah. punished out of me. So am I going to express my creativity or am I going to keep it under the radar? So yeah. I'm not punished, right? It's the latter, obviously, for sure. So um, it was just li living under their roof when I was growing up was, it, it was almost felt like a, I don't know, this sounds dramatic. It almost felt like a prison because I just, so every, I, I was the empty it, shell of a person. I was the empty shell of a child who was punished for every move she made. So you shut you, down. Right? You, you were an you were an only child. No, you were an I have only a younger child? sister. She's three years younger than I am. Um, mm -hmm. My mother triangulated us, and so we have very little of a relationship. Um, she bullied me throughout life, so she probably has narcissistic traits. Um, people listening to this are probably like, "Yeah, you bet, she's got narc traits." But <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, right when it when it when it comes to uh, a number. Of, uh, a number of situations that you can remember now, now that you're understanding the bigger picture of what was taking place in the home that you were growing up in, five different elements, no love, no creativity, no happiness, no empathy, no grace. The, these were things you were experiencing. You're not the only one on the planet, as we've talked about it. You know this. That's why you're, you're out speaking about this uh, to as many that will listen. You also know that your dad, Probably being an enabler who was a codependent. Matter of fact, there's a question here I'm going to get to in just a second here. Uh, here we go. A question from one of the those in the audience. It says, question for her, talking about you, Cammie. She thinks that her dad is a codependent person, uh, codependent, the uh, narc and codependent, the perfect couple. He makes the statement. So do you feel he has codependent issues, your dad, with uh, your mom's narcissistic traits? Oh, probably. Absolutely. I'm sure he does. Um, you know, my dad is a very touchy subject because while I was growing up, um, he was the one that I thought I had safe refuge in, right? And so um, I had no idea that he was, I didn't know of any words like codependent or trauma bond. He was just the mm -hmm. one who didn't scream and yell at me, right? But then to find out that he spied on me and told her everything that I would tell him. That probably doesn't answer the question. Um, but I, he's It gives a bigger picture of what you were experiencing that others are also experiencing now. The majority of people that watch this particular page uh, are either professionals uh, in the field that deal with this or they're beginners in the narcissistic uh, um, experience. The experience of being abused and understanding what a lot of these things are. 
And then, of course, there are those who are seasoned survivors or they're, uh, they're seasoned victims who, who uh, have been abused for a while and now they're making a transition into survivorship or recovery. Uh, so a lot of people are understanding what you're saying uh, because I'm able to look at the screen of who's on and I'm able to look at those who actually uh, are watching this show in, in other ways. They're letting me know they appreciate what you're saying. But I have to ask you this. Do you see yourself as a courageous person? Depends on the day. <laughs> Depends on the day. Depends because on the, the because Anne underscore Crosby underscore says your courage is remarkable mm -hmm. and your strength of character. Thank you. That's uh, it, was it, was it easy for you to start talking about this and start an Instagram page? Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> Um, the vulnerability part is very hard. Um, the, the, the posts that you see on my page from say end of December, 2020 to like end of February, 2021, that eight week time frame, I was posting some really difficult stuff. Um, so the vulnerability has, has been very tough. It's just like you have an open wound and you're pouring salt on it. But what drives me is validating other people. Because when I first started looking into this, I could not believe the amount of people. And the only, my only exposure is Instagram. And I know Instagram is not a therapist. But when you're doing research and you're coming across people who have the same experience as you do. So I look at other people as courageous for sharing their stuff. So, but I have days, um, and I, I guess I, I feel pretty courageous today too but i do have days in fact you're doing I, you're doing awesome you're doing <laughs> <thank> awesome you. <laughs> I, I've, had, I've had days last week where for three or four days in a row i was turned inward i yeah. shut down i hardly said anything to anyone i don't think a shower for four days please don't tell anybody i said that wait wait let me let me edit that out as you said no, it's, okay. <laughs> it's okay because people can yeah. relate like like there comes a time in your narcissistic abuse survivor path where you can't be courageous all the time no, because no, this yeah. stuff hurts like hell and it's hard AF. Hope it's okay to say mm -hmm. that on here, but it's hard. And so my courageous days are days like today, but I can mm -hmm. guarantee you this is going to drain me and tomorrow I'll probably yeah. have to shut down. But, I'm an empath that's and that's okay. So yeah. it's the thing I want to convey is like, you're going to have days like me where I feel courageous and I feel on point mm -hmm. and I want to do mm -hmm. hair and I want to do makeup. Yeah. And then I have days where I don't care. I don't care anymore. Um, yeah. you know, time to talk to the therapist, time to um, just give myself grace yeah. that I wasn't yeah. given in my home. You, 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 you write, you write this. I have to read something that you wrote in line with what you just said, because often people think, you can just, as it were, put on uh, a face or put on your face and go about your day and, and talk about these things. They can be quite emotionally taxing and draining. Oh, gosh. But I'm going to read something you wrote. Okay. In that posting that we were just talking about, this is what you wrote. Though I lived in that cold, unpredictable, fearful environment day in and day out, I slothed it off as normal and made excuses in my own mind for my mother's yelling, hateful, and abusive behavior in order to cope with it. Mm -hmm. This might sound strange, but I'm grateful for this realization. I left out a word because I can't say that on my, my <laughs> channel. Uh, th this is still a family channel. Yeah. So this might, this might sound strange, but I'm grateful for this realization because it's setting me and my inner child free. Mm. But then you, you put a question there. You say, how? For the first time, I understand that our childhood home, this is what you write, was a mirror of my mom's norm mm. when she was growing up. For the first time, I realized that I have the freedom and the ability to choose love first mm. and find my own creativity. 
for the first time you say, you realize that you can have freedom and choose love first. Yeah. You never saw, saw freedom because you said you, even when you left the house, you, you really weren't really free, even though you were out of it, because your mind and emotions were wondering what's going to happen when I get back. 100%. You were living in somebody else's, according to your words, you were living in somebody else's norm. Yeah. You know, we've already talked about this. You've already highlighted it. You know you're not the only person on the planet that, mm -hmm. that live that way. There's people living that way right now, yeah. 17, 16, 14 years old, 22, 23. Breaks my heart. What advice do you give someone as building blocks, stepping stones, toward freedom and choosing love first. What do you recommend as one, two, three, one, two steps that they can make? Well, I, I think there's a, there's a clear difference between uh, people who are younger, still living under the parents' roof, like they cannot move out, mm. right? They don't have a place of their own. They cannot move out. I was that child. But there's a different set of answers for people like me or in their 30s or 40s, late 20s, who are mm -hmm. moved out. And are, mm -hmm. it's, it's a completely different animal. And so yeah. I have experience with being, um, I mean, I'm, I'm in my 50s, so I have experience with being mm -hmm. outside the home and then recovering. And it's, it's probably isn't the answer you want, but it's like I don't have experience with trying to find my freedom while I'm still yeah. living under the roof. And that's because for me personally, it felt impossible to find right. freedom. So um, I do remember as a child, I spent a lot of time in my room and I read a lot. Right? Wow. Because that was a great escape for me. I was a voracious yeah. reader. Um, I did spend time in my room as much as I could. And um, again, I didn't realize it was a, abuse back then, but anytime I was with the other three people in my family, I was a shell of a person. I was under the radar. I did as little as possible so I wouldn't draw attention to myself because that meant abuse. And right, so I, I can, I, I don't know how to advise people or not advise, um, um, offer tips, I guess, because I don't have experience on how to get out of that when you're still living at home. And it's mm -hmm. the same for people who, you know, they say that when you've been abused in your home, you're mm -hmm. likely to attract um, a partner later in life, um, mm -hmm. husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, who's narcissistic as well. I'm an anomaly. My husband is not like that. <laughs> I, that is. You got, a, you got a cool husband. That is the gift of God in my life right there. I'll tell you what. But yeah. I have friends, some wonderful close friends I've actually made by connecting with people who follow my page. And they not only came from a home where they were abused, but then they went straight into a relationship where they were abused. And I was like, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to, I mean, that's worse than how I had it. I cannot imagine going from your family home where your family unit should love you, and then going yeah. into an intimate relationship where you're devalued and worthless. That's, you know, that's, that's why, like, when you say, when you ask me if I've ever felt courageous, well, I start and I think about people like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, there's so much to heal from. When it comes to someone who has walked their life in recovery because they're no longer at home and they are happy, mm -hmm. they chose happiness, they received a, the measure of happiness that they've they've worked for but yet those nightmares come back they have moments where they're uncomfortable y you know what i'm talking about oh yeah even if even if nobody else is watching right now that what do you do when you have those moments where you don't want to shower where you don't want to put makeup on where you don't want to be presentable for the world and you just want to shut everything down what advice so i you know i, I let doug know like dude i'm on the struggle bus today and you know, the struggle okay, right? that's a good one. okay that's like no that's a good one i like that one 
Right, I just, like that right. on the struggle bus today. I, yeah. Even I maybe it's the first time I heard it. Hashtag, str <laughs> hashtag struggle bus, everybody. In the trenches Get your t-shirts. There's your t-shirt right there. Everybody yeah. hears me say it. Oh, 1999. There you go. There struggle it is. bus. There you go. Write that down. You know it's me. Write that down because yeah. I'll forget it two yeah. seconds from now. I say I don't forget it. I don't know what I just told you. There's no, a marketing a, idea right there. Support okay. su support her with her struggle bus struggle bus shirt. I don't that's know what's funny. wrong with my. Right. Today. Go ahead. But but I, Go ahead. I I communicate with Doug and I just I mean he can probably feel my energy he can probably <laughs> feel that I'm not my chipper self in the morning and um you know I can because you are you are a chipper I can tell you that right now <laughs> everybody I can tell you that about her right now you're a chipper person <laughs> that I know well not all the time though right and it's, <laughs> not, not it's all, yeah, well. giving yourself that grace to realize that you don't have to be chipper all the time and it is okay for you to shut down you have like you. You, you have to honor your soul. You have to realize that you can't, okay, like, let's say it this way. Shutting yourself down is honoring your soul and honoring your healing journey. Because sometimes I can't process things, the deep stuff, the stuff that hurts, the stuff that twists my heart and makes yeah. me cry. I can't process that being chipper. So in order yeah. to prepare for this interview today, I pro yeah. processed a lot yeah. over yeah. the weekend because... Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's when I feel like when I process something, when I cancel it and clear it, I'm able to take on the next thing. Yeah. Right. So, OK, so what you've just said, again, you've already said this a couple of times, but I'm going to piggyback something else. That's a show in itself. No, because <laughs> I want to go down that road. We, we're not going to be able to do it today. But processing things uh, is great when you're a chipper and you're ready to do that. I get too many people, not too many, I get a number of people that will write me and mention certain things, of course, they want to see on the show or different people. And one of the things that is highlighted is that they don't feel, you're not going to feel chipper all the time. Uh -uh. And some people, which is a posting I use from you, you have a posting in which you say it's, uh, it's, it's okay to not be okay. It's here somewhere. So I'm, I, I just used it uh, to promo the show. Oh, yeah, that, uh, you're going to be on. Uh, you know, I love that posting that you have. I always love that statement because I get a number of people that talk about that and they may watch the show not feeling well, but they'll hear like your experience or someone else, or they may watch a music guest come on and they feel themselves getting a little bit better mm -hmm. and then they'll do something else. Do you find yourself when you're not feeling okay and then you allow yourself to feel that it's okay to not be okay? all of a sudden start working your way back up with the little things first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because on the, because on the screen, um, oh my goodness, hold on one second. I hope I say this right. I think that's Ursula uh, who uh, is going to hopefully be on the show soon. Ursula highlights this being gentle with ourselves mm -hmm. and that of course it's okay to just be. Uh, again, people write me, and a lot of times they don't feel well. They mention they watch the show or a guest, and they use little things to start feeling better. Yes. Similar to what you were saying. Sometimes, like you tell Doug, your husband, I, I, I'm, I'm on the, would you say, struggle bus? Struggle I just bus. love that. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm, I'm going to find bus. a way to use that. I love that. Let me, no, no, okay. I'm writing that down real quick. Nope. <laughs> That's nope. a Midwest thing. <laughs> struggle bus. I love that. That's a great way you communicate with him. It's not happening today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm here on the planet. I'm with you. You guys, 30 years of marriage, but <laughs> the struggle. But was real. why is it important for people to recognize, like in your case, you went from having a relationship with your husband. Everything's moving in a certain direction. You do the right thing. And he, very in a stoic and a good husband way, we're going to go do this together. Yeah. You sell things. You move out. You travel, you go set up house shop with your mom and dad only to find out, look at all the demons coming back. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, Paxson, honestly, I don't think Doug and I have talked about what it's, it did not damage our marriage at all. But it was very stressful to, for Doug to see this different side of his in-laws. Like we all got oh. along so well. Even the weird stuff that happened, Doug just kind of blew yeah. off because I blew well, off. Right. 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 But we haven't, now you've brought up a talking point that. No, 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 no. I was, I'll tell you. Okay. So, Cammie, Cammie, I'll tell you this right now. 
as I told you when we did the show, for, I'm leading somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So I was going to use that for the last thing because guess what I was going to do? I was going to ask my man to stick his hand in and wave or go in there, flex the muscle, and then he could leave because I know we, we can't interview him. But um, I was leading up to Doug. That's what I'm doing right now because we got just a few more minutes before uh, I'm going to have to go. Yes. Uh, but I, this aspect of Doug being this son-in-law, your partner in life, and you're you're in this situation, and he's watching his wife change, mm -hmm. and go from being this woman he's with to being this little girl, and something is off. And the off is that, well, the experience you had with your mom that we talked we talked about, and I just read about that you described. Mm -hmm. No love, no creativity, no happiness, mm -hmm. no grace. You were punished for being creative and happy. Oh. You were pounded. You were. You were mismanaged and mistreated emotionally. Mm -hmm. Too many people, women especially, end up in a marriage like that. Yeah. You didn't. Yeah. But now this man that's by your side is sitting there going like, I'm telling you, I've been, him and I haven't talked, but I'm, I've just seen him in the show prep. I'm sorry. He, he looked like the kind of guy going like, what the, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah. You know, we came to help and my wife is losing herself. Yeah. It's like, we're out of here. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I want my woman back. <laughs> no, no, no. Protection well, the, mode. The interesting, but he, you're still a team now. But go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say the interesting thing for Doug is that, um, you know, he's, he's in the trenches with me because yeah. he sees yeah. how hard this, this recovery, I don't want to call it healing because almost like healing sounds like it's a destination. This you sound more in recovery, yeah, like what you're saying. You're trying yeah, to get back right. to where you were yeah. before you went to Florida. Right. But the thing is, and the viewers who have experienced this type of abuse will probably concur. The thing is, is that we don't know who we really are. As a child of wow. parental narcissistic abuse, I was not allowed to be myself. Right, right. So I don't, I, I can't recover back to who I was. I'm learning who I am at freaking 54 years old. Who said midlife is bad? It's, it's going to be the best time of my life, right? Yeah. But, but you know, you, you mentioned Doug. So he's in the trenches with me, but he's also watching alongside me as I walk into who I am. Like, I have that, paint stuff yeah. on the kitchen table. Like, that's new for us, but it's not yeah. just painting. It's like me learning to walk more into my confidence, but yet it's also me, me laying on the bed, staring blankly at the ceiling, when I'm turned that, inward in that's okay too. function. So, yeah, right. so Doug's role is changing from, I mean, well, I, his role is changing from, you know, well, the relationship we had before to how can I support you today? You know, right. and right. we have had to have a lot of communication that's different yeah. from we've, what we've ever had because yeah. he's, this is new to both of us. Yeah. Right. So, um, it's um, he he's an incredible guy, and I got like I got so I got so lucky. He has taught me grace. My husband has taught me love. My husband, and now I'm getting sappy. My husband has taught me those five things you mentioned that you read off of my post. I can't yeah. remember what they are. Um, love, grace, understanding, um, happiness, and joy. He's taught me that, but I've been dragging this this barrel of condition responses where I've pushed it all away. So now letting myself have the freedom to walk into being like, oh my God, it's okay to be happy. Like it's, yeah. it's mind blowing. It's not easy. I struggle every week. And your, your survivors, your fellow survivors, everybody yeah. here watching this, you guys, you struggle every week. But know that you're, people are validating you. Like uh, all these Instagram accounts and like what you do here on Narc Abuse um, TV yeah. Network you're validating people and that and education is empowerment you know and so i'm on top of the world today but tomorrow yeah. right <laughs> we're talking yeah. top no, no. Not. Yeah. we're talking yeah. right and so it, the, the, it's giving yourself it, it's almost it's almost as if i have to tell you that somebody told me it this way and i'm going to say it now that you made me think of it one second here let me do this do that um someone came on the show and then after the show we talked and they said Thank you for, for the purge. And I said, oh, I never, you know, you were a great guest. And they said, no, 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 no. She told me, she said, 
thank you for letting me purge. She said, I did the show just so I could purge. I just didn't know how much was going to come out. She said, I just, I just needed to purge. Yeah. And she now has her own show, but she recognizes that people need time to purge. Yes. Which is different than venting. She explained it to me the way she looked at it. And yeah. I love it because it's one thing to vent, mm -hmm. but to purge uh, and to like scrape as much as possible out and get every vestige as possible out of it, nook and cranny, mm -hmm. is the way she looked at it when she came on the show. Because she didn't know exactly what she was going to be getting rid of. She just wanted to get it off her chest, but not vent. Yes. Because similar to what you said, she didn't feel like she was healing. Mm -hmm. She was recovering, which mm -hmm. was, in her mind, different. And they do have two different definitions, very different definitions. She felt that she was purging which was an active participation to get rid of something mm. that no longer served her purpose yeah. or, one, or oh. one's purpose, which is totally different than just healing. Mm -hmm. You know, a wound can heal and you go about your day and you check on it every now and then. You just try to keep it away from other people hitting it or, yeah. you know, messing with it. But a purge means I know what that is. It doesn't belong here anymore. And I'm going to actively do something to get rid of it. And she saw the show as her opportunity to do so. That's awesome. Whether whether that whether that's the case for you or not, and as I'm pressed up against the clock, and you know I could spend much time with you, but you've already made me four times almost cry. I have no problem oh. with that. But I but I you, no 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 no. I mean that in a positive. Way. It doesn't bother me. I mean we do that on the show. It's happened numerous times. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure that you were the only person on today, <laughs> because oh. after after a weekend. I have to be really careful because I just kind of get started. You know, Monday can kind of just get oh, you yeah. started. Yes. And I was already prepared because after reading your page, like, comment, share, follow, okay, Cammy's page. Cammy, tell everybody again what your page is, please. My page is narc.abuse.survivor.cammy, C-A-M-M-I-E. Right. And um, I don't know where Doug is, but maybe Doug on the screen can, can give us a hello unless he is somewhere in the vicinity and he can stick his hand in. Is he there to stick his hand in? He can just he stick his hand in? He just, he just oh, I said, our daughter at uh, work. So. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Yes. I'm telling you, everybody. Oh, uh, uh, yes. No. Well, we're going to do it again. Awesome. Everybody, please make sure that uh, if you do nothing else, like, comment, share, follow, <laughs> and write a hello or Doug, keep it going, little booster shot for Doug uh, for being uh, there in the trenches, in the trenches. Look, at, I just have yeah, no idea what's wrong with uh, In the trenches uh, with you, with Cammy. Say, uh, give a shout out to him as well. By the way, again, this Monday, today, is shout out. That's what's behind me here. Shout out Monday uh, for Cammy because she deserves uh, some type of encouragement and support from all of us in the community, the narcissistic uh, abuse community, uh, to support, show love and support to her. If you want to nominate somebody to be on the show, if you would like to be on the show, of course, you know, you could always uh, share your story here on Narc Abuse TV Network. Um, and feel free to DM me to do so. Uh, and we could do a show prep uh, to work on a show together. I got to tell you what's on the screen here before I run out of time. Um, uh, Ursula, I, I, I know I got that right, I hope. Uh, she says the purge is real. I like that. Uh, remove, um, remove the old, uh, so the new can regenerate. Yes. I like that. Yes, yes like without that. a doubt. So, so when you were actually moved back in with your parents to take care of them, you and Doug, after you got rid of your, you know, essentially you got rid of some belongings too, didn't you? You got yep. rid of a number of, the, you essentially gave up the life you had, yeah. you moved in and you found out there were certain parts of you that hadn't necessarily been purged yet. Yes. And you started to be confronted with that. Mm -hmm. You've made progress, but it still is a challenge at times, correct? Oh, absolutely. It's probably a yeah. challenge more than it's not a challenge. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah, so you have your moment. Lay on the bed and look at the ceiling because the ceiling is not going to let you down. It's going to stay yeah. up there. It's yep. going to stay up there. Right, okay. right. You sit there, lie on your bed, look at the ceiling, knowing, okay, that's a fixed thing. It's not going to let me down. Yeah. I'm just going to lie here and, and relax yep. a little bit. And, and it's so okay yep. to not be okay like you posted on your page. Uh, yep. There are a number of different posts that I wanted to highlight 
Uh, I'm not going to have time to do that, but I am going to read this one. And here we go. Um, this posting says, walking on eggshells plus being morbidly terrified of doing anything wrong plus being conditioned to believe money is the course is the cause of mean fighting plus getting in trouble for stupid stuff equals my childhood. Mm. Yeah. If you if you didn't catch all that, like, comment, share, follow Cammy's page. <laughs> Walking on eggshells, money, uh, all these things here. Be, getting in trouble for stupid stuff was your childhood. Yeah. But that's not your marriage. Oh heck no, no because so you've been blessed. You've yeah, been oh, blessed. Yes. Out of out of one, you are able to have a marriage and a partner. Thirty years now, plus thirty years. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, and the interesting thing that I don't touch on yet in my Instagram is the fact that these condition responses from my childhood almost caused me to divorce Doug about 11 years ago. So that's oh. another show for itself as well, because I brought all that baggage into the marriage. And I thought... It start, that, creep, it start, it start creeping up on you? Yeah, because I was, you know, a marriage is a partnership with, between two people. And I was raised that you don't speak up about anything, anything. So, you know, and, and a marriage where two people typically speak up, I never spoke up about anything because women aren't supposed to. Well, not women aren't supposed to. Cammy wasn't supposed to. The way you were conditioned, though. Yes, by my mother growing up. So, so, so essentially, we're not necessarily, all, we're not in essence overall saying, that it even had to be a problem, just the normal yeah. way to communicate as a woman with a man in a relationship was not a part of your fundamental upbringing. Precisely. But here's the irony. The irony here is that my mother spoke up and yelled at and yelled at and screamed at, in other words, at my dad, yeah, right? right. right? Yeah, but right. If, if I said anything, if I asked for a glass <laughs> of water at dinner or anything, I was shot down so i watched my mother be that way with my dad and yeah or i never ever ever would there you go yeah yet, in the back I of your just, mind you're going like i'm never going to be like that yes yes but and and i so i carried all my condition baggage with me and it almost ended Wait, marriage. so even if you so even if you realistically or as my mama would say to my sisters you got something to say girl you better say it don't let no man try to tell you to shut up oh. say what you got to say so so even if you were conditioned just normally you wanted to say something you suppressed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because and and Doug Doug's walking around limping essentially in the relationship because he doesn't have a full partner yet because that partner has technically been kidnapped by your mom and was still being held hostage. Yeah, but neither one of us knew that. That's what I was gonna say. I we got to do this again. We got to do this again. I'm gonna run out of time. We yeah, we, we got to do this again because that's a whole other because, show. Because that's like he and look what you got right now. He's he's willing to be in the trenches. Can you imagine how many relationships have gone by the wayside? Because we're not just talking women, men too. Oh, yes. They come from the same, and yes. the woman is like ready to go. I'm with there with you. And she's going like, why is this guy acting crazy? Yeah. Because right? you both didn't know. We, we had no uh, Yeah, we got to do it. We got to do another show. Right? This is like, yeah. you, you, now, wait, now I'm awake. Now I'm awake. <laughs> I'm really awake. <laughs> right? Be no, because people, no, people write to me about what we're talking about right now. Yeah. And they want to see it on the show and really have it opened up because they're, they're experiencing this, what we're talking about right now, yeah. let alone what you talk about on your page. Uh, again, tons of postings I could read you, uh, ladies and gents, but I can't right now because of the way time uh, doesn't allow us to do it today. But I, I do got to get back to the screen and then we're going to do something else here in just a second. Then we're going to have to go. But, uh, no, let me, let me back up a little bit here on my my monitor off here. Let me see. So uh, Ursula, we touched on what Ursula said here. Um, hello to all of those that have joined in, uh, Allison and others that, that are here. Um, uh, Natasha Sunshine, um, before I do that, yeah, she says, Natasha says the condition response is real. Yes. And that's essentially what you're talking about, right? Yes. Um, and then uh, Ursula says your guest is speaking real fast. Uh, so she appreciates uh, you being here and what you're saying. Uh, we don't try to sabotage the relationships. We just think that the behavior we acquired are normal. Yes. We literally have to unlearn the traits we gained from childhood. Yes. 
Yes. You agree? 100%. Yeah. She's yeah. And matter, ma matter of fact, Ursula uh, says this is true. Uh, so everybody give props to Na Natasha underscore sunshine for that uh, excellent point that you make, Natasha. Uh, Ursula goes on, kids are great recorders and bad interpreters. Uh. Okay. I'm sorry. That's pretty good. Ursula, when you come on the show, we might, if you, we, we work this show prep out, we come on the show, we, we might have to name the show that great recorders, but bad interpreters, uh, children are that. Uh, Ursula says this, she says, I am so thankful for my patient husband. It's been a hard process. We both come from trauma, 11 years strong and a bumpy ride because we're both growing, but we are each other's support system. This is this is another aspect that has been brought to my attention in the short time, a year that I've been doing this uh -huh. in a few more weeks, is that uh, there are support systems that are made to, uh, where both of them, pe both of the people, husband and wife, are working like emotional detectives together to, uh -huh. to unearth what the issues are that could get in the way of them spending the rest of their life together. And they work together on it instead of pointing fingers at each other and then all of a sudden, uh, just dropping down a separation or divorce decree. Uh, so uh, everybody appreciates you being here. Uh, thank you, Ursula. I see what you said there. Uh, we're looking forward. We can uh, put some other shows here. This is all free TV, TV for everybody. I don't know what's wrong with my mouth. <laughs> I can, it's like, and I had coffee. I don't know what's going on with me. Okay, so um, I knew this was going to be emotionally interesting for me. And when I say that, that means it was going to get my attention emotionally. And you did that today. Uh, thank you for bringing tears to my eyes um, and uh, making me uh, really reflect on make, uh, to make it a point to have more shows that discuss this. You will be coming back. We will work that out. Uh, my summer series season started June 1st uh, here this year. Uh, it will go until the end of August, in which we are putting on, hopefully, in those 90 days, uh, at least 90 people. Uh, if not more. So we are way ahead of pace right now for what's scheduled to happen over the next few months. Uh, today, uh, I am so glad that I found you. I, I left a few slots open uh, for this summer. I'm glad I found you so I could put you on a show. Uh, you are a remarkably intelligent woman, Thanks. creative woman, and a woman, as you mentioned, you and Doug, Doug has helped you find grace. <sighs> Both of you are two graceful people. Uh, he is he is the Gene Kelly in your life, yes, and uh, you you are a woman that makes him sing in the rain. Yeah. So 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 when I when I when I saw both of you, I was going to tell you that day, but uh, I was waiting to this moment to tell you. So I know Doug had to go, but um, you're both you both remind me of singing in the rain. I, it's oh. just uh, you you both are a beautiful couple uh, that have stuck together. Yeah. But we need to do some more digging in this subject and talking about it. And when you come on again, I'm going to make it more of an open form in which uh, we're able to let others participate, or as I call it, a visual clubhouse uh, experience uh, where you and I can talk about this and let others uh, purge if they like to as well. So I have to go. Okay. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not supposed to do this much talking during the show, but I have to control it. We have gone one hour and eight minutes uh, talking. And I know you were thinking at the beginning, you were going like, Is, how much, how am I going to talk so much? You did excellent. Were you nervous? Were you nervous? No. No? Okay. No, I All love right. public speaking. I love um, validating and encouraging people. Like, that's that's what makes me tick. It's one of my love languages. And so, yeah. um, no, I've been really looking forward to this. So I'll look forward to coming on again. And yeah. um, we'll just broach a couple of different subjects and... Yes, we will. We'll, we will. We will plan it, but it won't be planned. Excuse me. We will plan it, but it won't be scripted, everybody. That's and you can are more than that's welcome. That's Please, everybody that's here, tell a friend. Uh, go back, take a look at the shows. Uh, tell a friend about Cami. Tell a friend to watch when she comes on again. Of course, Narc Abuse TV Network is always here, free for everyone to participate in, as well as tell their story. Thank you, Cami. You're an exceptional woman Thank with you. a an Arnold Schwarzenegger type of a husband. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell him I said so. And thank you so much. And tell Doug uh, much love and support to him. And uh, stay in the trenches, both of you together. Everybody's telling you thank you. There you go. Thank oh, you, Cammy. Thank you guys for being we'll, here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Good. We will see everybody tomorrow. We will be back on Open Session underscore podcast, our other channel, 
uh, where more victims and survivors tell their story. Thank you. We'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye, Bye for now. Bye-bye.